Did you not snark? Now, look here, mate. Did it ever occur to you fellows that blood would ruin the carpet? Cut it out now. I'll cut it out, Mansfield. Look here, if you kill me, they'll stop all of us taking our exercise up there. Nothing like a brisk turn about the quarter deck before breakfast, I always say. You always say too much. I happen to like the smell of fresh air, that's all. Yes. Smells a little sweeter than this hell hole. Oh, his lordship doesn't like me to eat the air down here, does he? Well, his lordship's smelling sauce, his lordship's gonna faint! <laughs> Maybe it isn't so much the exercise, there's a titillating possibility of seeing someone presentable among that blousy, toothless, ragbag lot of megs, pegs, mobs and besses who call themselves women. You don't have to wait for exercise of that. They're right through this bulkhead. Go in there! Oh, they'd tear me to pieces. Whether from anger or desire, I should never know. You're not allowed in there. Thank you, Bob. You didn't do so very well yourself, did you? You finished up the convict ship, didn't you? You, the butler to the Duke of somewhere or other? <laughs> Where's your purple pants, mate? A butler I may have been, but only when I became financially embarrassed. My grandfather... Here we go again. He was a Duke's I'm butler. Bad. He pinched something and you got caught. The only thing I ever pinched was her grace. <laughs> Look, an angel from heaven, 
My dear madam. God! God, kindly come and let me out before these lunatics go out of their senses. Love, sweet love, leave me not. Oh, God, God, the late even enjoying the trip. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing in there with the men? Whoa! <laughs> one of the women is sick. I need help. No, you get right back there. Do you want another death to answer for when we land? Well, all right then, I'll let you through. You others keep back. Don't go, darling. <laughs> well, what is it, miss? I must have fresh water. Boiled water. Look here, I can't... the ship's doctor. Send for him. This woman is desperately sick. What is it down there? Sir, it's this young woman, sir. She says there's a sick woman among the convicts. So? No. Well, she says she wants water, sir. Boiled water and the physician. Boiled water, she says. Well, run and get some, then. But, sir, I can't leave. You go. I'll watch your first. Right, sir. Well. You seem a very courageous young lady with little fear of authority, I gather. Not much, sir. Oh, I see. Well, with a fair wind, we should sight Jackson by the morning, and this difficult voyage will be over. Difficult? Disgraceful, I should say. The disgrace, madam, is not of our making. No, sir. Of course not. I should not be so forward. I'm upset about Polly. About the sick woman, sir. Well, it does you credit to show some concern for your fellows. Not at all usual, I'm afraid. Surprising to find a person like you in a situation like this. You seem a well-spoken girl. My speech is my mother, sir. My troubles are my own. Oh, forgive me, I had no wish to pry into your private affairs. Um, what's your name, girl? Elizabeth Westcott, sir. And to save you the trouble of searching your incomplete record, sir, my sentence is five years. I find you insolent, young lady. When I say my troubles are my own, I mean my own fault, sir. Oh, how's that? Oh, it's simple enough. And usual enough. I was transported for theft, sir. Mm hmm And what did you steal? I killed Vicar's prized pig and served it up to him at my father's inn. Well, for heaven's sake, why? My father is not a rich man, sir. Vicar came to my father's house to dine. He brought two ladies and a gentleman with him and we ate and drank so much. Yes, but why the pig? Well, Vicar would not pay for his meal. We should be host to the cloth, he said. <laughs> and so you went and took his pig, eh? Well, not till he sent word that he was coming again the next week. And then I said nothing, but I went and killed the pig and served it up to him for dinner. <laughs> with an apple in his mouth. <laughs> he was furious, sir. But I should have remembered that the judge was Vicar's brother. And for this, they gave you five years? Yes, sir. Any more noise, and I'll have somebody's neck stretched. Forgive me for laughing just now, but it is pleasant to see you smile as well. You are no thief, Elizabeth. Thank you for recognizing it, sir. Oh. Here's your boiled water. Dr. McAloney says he'll be down straight after lunch, sir. Oh, thank you, Evans. Well, I trust your sick friend is soon quite recovered. Thank you, sir. <coughs> oh, um... Here's a little brandy. Mixed with water, it may help in the treatment. Oh, but, sir, this bottle is valuable. Yes, it's silver. I'd be glad to have it back when it's empty. Oh, but, sir... You are no thief, Elizabeth. Thank you, sir. Oh, sir. Mm hmm If I am to return this, may I know your name? Serves. Richard Serves. Thank you. Lieutenant Serves.
Oh, my dove, one sip of your divine nectar, one taste of the manna from your own hand. Let me pass. Oh, my fair one, such ecstasy is beyond imagining. Love, sweet love. Stop this nonsense. Nonsense? Oh, cruelty, cruelty. The bottle. Oh, no. Bottle. <laughs> Many names have I been Give called. Give it back. Give me back the bottle. It isn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's you again, miss. You all right? What's going on down there? Evan? It's the young woman, sir. All I know. No trouble. If any man played a finger on her, he'd be tried and hanged by midday. You being annoyed, Miss Westcott? Crikey. Miss Westcott. That's enough. Miss Westcott. Oh, it's nothing, sir. We were just talking, sir. Hmm. I hope so. God bless you, miss. Yes. So say all of us. One wonders what to say. Honor among thieves. Oh, you're a sorry lot. Why won't you ever learn? We'll be in Port Jackson soon, and you won't last a week there without someone to look after you. I suppose it'll have to be someone like me. Why does a man think of a plan? Lydia than a little boy of I'm ready to be a good friend for you. And though I may wind up out of my mind, you'll probably find it a friend for you. Look at you now, beetling brow. What how you'll ever struggle free. If you ever need a mother or a guardian, ain't your friend for me. Money about. Give us a shout. Going without is quite ridiculous. If you ever need a wallet or a silver snuffbox, then for us. We're a mob, ready to rob, doing the job without a lot of fuss. If you ever need a second story window, open, send for us. Don't. Worry at all, just give us a call, we'll carry the ball to the end for you. But, when it's a case, a pass in this case, and if you can face it, we'll send for you. Planning a bank, robbing a bank, why you hang the poor of the bank? If you never need an order on the bank of England, send for you.
Land on the port bow. We arrived. Call Jackson in the morning. Hurrah! More or less. all the excitement, Richard, my boy. They've all gone home to England and the colonial office will have to sort out the mess. <laughs> Bly, MacArthur, Johnson, all of them. Heaven knows what the outcome will be. Which leaves me the last remnant of authority and six months away from my superiors. Your father would have chuckled at the nicety of my position, Richard. Well, my father would have, would have been happy, sir, to know that a friend was here in Sydney to make me welcome. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Patterson is most disappointed she wasn't well enough to be here. The voyage up from the Derwent has upset her. Oh, she isn't a good sailor. However, you'll come and see us again soon, when things have settled down. After all, we've only been back here a few days ourselves. Found the place in a terrible state. <laughs> I'm sorry Mrs. Patterson isn't well, sir. Oh, it's not just the sea trip. I'm afraid the whole situation here is a bit much for her. For example, that appalling luncheon we've just eaten. Oh, no, sir. It's the first meal for months I haven't had to hold still with one hand and eat with the other. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm on my way to overcoming the problem of fresh meat, Richard. I have a pair of rabbits. I intend to breed them. I have a theory they do quite well in this country if properly sheltered and protected. Mm, you may well be right there, sir. But the servant problem, as you see, is quite another thing. One hears of it all the time in London drawing rooms, but they have no conception. No conception at all. There was a convict girl on the Eastern Star, sir, who was housekeeper in her father's inn. I fancy she may be the sort of person you need. She's bound to be assigned as a servant to someone, so why not to you? Well, she'd be sure to rob us blind. No, we, we'll manage somehow. Well, I, I say a convict, sir, but it was only some sort of trumped-up charge. How do you know? Well, she told me so herself, sir, only yesterday. There was some sickness on board. She made it her business to help. I lent her a flask of brandy. Did you get it back? Well, no, sir, but what oh, with our Richard, arrival... Richard, my boy, every one of these convicts has a story to tell. They all scream of injustices, but the only thing they understand at all is force. Don't give them an inch. Yes, but where will all this lead, sir? I mean, if the colony is to grow into something worthwhile... No, no, it's impossible. These people are completely irresponsible. No sense of decency, no respect for authority, nothing. You can't build anything on that. And the French had no respect for authority either, sir. When that authority was illogical and outdated, prejudiced and unjust. What? I beg your pardon, sir. No, not at all. Radical ideas, appropriate to the young. And my best argument is the fact that you've obviously seen the last of your brandy flask. Excuse me, Colonel Patterson. Oh, what is it, Randall? There's a person outside demanding to see Mr. Soames. She's a convict girl, sir. I told her she had no business here. What gall? Send her away, man. I tried, sir. But she insisted I tell Mr. Soames her name was Westcott. Westcott? Well, that's the one, sir. Won't you see her? Oh, very well. Bring her in. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Westcott, sir. Well, girl, speak up. I'm assigned to Major McDonald, sir, in the country at Parramatta. He sent a cart for us and we have to leave soon. The man in charge didn't want to let me go, sir, but I persuaded him. Persuaded him? Yes, sir. Amazing. I have to find Mr. Soames, sir, to return this bottle. What did you say your name was again, girl? Elizabeth Westcott, sir. And what were you convicted of, Westcott? Sir, but I... No, no more. I've heard enough of these butts. I was going to say, but I'm not complaining, sir. It was my mistake and I deserve what I got. Oh, this is refreshing. You're a very spirited young woman. Thank you, sir. Spirited and honest. It's quite a surprise in a convict. Um, uh, do you think you could manage this household for me? Of course, sir. 
I should need help, though. Oh, but Major McDonald. Oh, you leave Major McDonald to me. Uh, help, you say? It's a big house. You'd need a staff. Convicts. Could you handle them? I manage well enough on the ship, sir. Yes, I suppose so. Richard, my boy, I'm going to put you to work. Randall, find Lieutenant Carter. He's to take Mr. Soames to the barracks office and change this girl's assignment. Very well, sir. Now, one special point I want to mention is this. I have some rabbits in a hutch out on the lawn. They're exceedingly valuable and I'm making you personally responsible. Rabbits, sir? Rabbits. Well, now, I must go and tell Lydia of these arrangements. You'll come and see us again, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. And please give Mrs. Patterson my respects. I will. Goodbye, Rich. Goodbye, sir. Well, you look a very different person from yesterday. I found a little inlet at the end of the town. I bathed. It was wonderful. <laughs> Sir? Yes, Elizabeth? About the staff, sir. There were some men on the ship who would be suitable. One of them was a butler to a duke in England, sir. And? The other two are clever with their hands. <laughs> what, burglars or pickpockets? One of each, sir, but harmless. Harmless indeed. Very well, Elizabeth. You shall have your way. But please be discreet about this, hmm? I will, sir. It was kind of you to speak to the Colonel about me, sir. I speak to the It was you, wasn't it? And simple tales you listen to And start suspecting But sometimes somebody speaks the truth You feel you spoke And your words were vivid and warm I don't know how she does it. Ha! Huh. And very well served, Mansfield. Thank you, sir. We do our best. I'm sure you do. Even you, Snark, are managing a little better to keep your thumb out of the soup. Please, Your Honor, sir. It's Harbert here, sir. Oh, Harbert, then. You haven't done this kind of work before, have you? No, sir. Then I wonder what brought Richard to select such an unprepossessing creature. Please, ma'am. It was Mr. Soames that chose us. It was Miss West. It was I, madam. Mr. Soames selected me, and I recommended the others. I believe they can be trained. We're delighted to serve such a gracious lady. As Westcott, Mansfield? As you, madam, naturally. Uh, that will be all, Mansfield. Mm, very well, sir. Love. What is it, my dear? 
I don't know why I should put up with such insolence. You heard that man. But he was paying you a compliment, Mrs. Patterson, surely. No, he was insolent, the way he twists words. He gets it from that girl. Oh, nonsense. The girl is a treasure. But her behavior, she's taken complete charge. Yes, but look what she's done, why she's transformed the whole place. I could have done the same, Mr. Patterson, had I not been indisposed. Oh, yes, dear, I know that. But I'm quite well now. Yes, dear. But I'm not mistress in my own house. And you don't care. Oh, now, Lydia. <laughs> I could manage just as well as she does. Those men, I could handle them. You heard what Mansfield said. Delighted to serve such a gracious lady. But a moment ago, you said he was insolent. Now you're at it. Mm, twisting words. You're all the same. The same? The same as she is. She twists you round her little finger. What with her and those rabbits, you, you don't care for me anymore. Oh, Lydia, really? I know why you're keeping her here. I know. Treasure, is it? I'll give you treasure. Oh, this is absurd. <laughs> The girl is a capable and efficient housekeeper, nothing more. Now, please, stop crying. I won't have it, I won't. Taking over my house and my husband. Mr. Patterson, either she goes or I do. That's my last word. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Truly, I am. I shan't stay, of course. I'll go back to Major MacDonald at... Parameter. And I'll go back to salt beef. Come on, you rabbits, get to it! I must be punished, that's understood. It will be hard to leave the comfort of government house for the hurly-burly of the common world. Yes, of course, punishment is essential. I wonder if Major MacDonald at Parramatta isn't letting you off a little lightly. Oh, I'm sure it is, sir. What alternatives do you suggest? Elizabeth, do you know what a ticket of leave is? Ticket of leave, sir? Yes, it means, uh, what were your words? Leaving the comfort of government house for the hurly-burly of the common world. Of course, some people might consider it as a reward for the well-behaved. It means you have all the rights and privileges of a free citizen, except, of course, that you can't leave the colony until your sentence expires. A ticket of not to leave, sir. But me? Yes. You. I'm going to arrange a ticket of leave for you. How would you like that? That would be wonderful, sir. Of course, I would have trouble deciding what to do, but there's a house for, for lease in Pit Row. Could I start an inn? It's a very good position. No, no, a very rough locality. You never get supplies of rum from this ravenous mob of office. Leave that to me, sir. Well, then you'd need money. Where would you get that? From you, sir. You're going to lend me five pounds. Am I indeed? Oh, <laughs> oh bless me. So I am. Yeah. You can pay me back when you, uh... Well, no, on second thoughts, you keep it as wages for the time you've been here. Oh, no, sir, it's too much. No, not another word, Elizabeth. You know you can convince me of anything. Good night. Good night, sir. An inn. I'll call it... The Silver Bottle. <laughs> And I don't want anything more This is my day And when I'm on my way Blue skies above me I feel like a young girl When she has just fallen in love
stop running and keep running and go until I drop. This is no game that I play. I'm on my way. Come on, Mog Love. Just another. Just one for Mrs. Randall's favorite son. I tell you, no. You young gents think you could come here and disgrace us all. You were all in disgrace long ago. Just a bunch of filthy convicts. All this town is. Herself don't have to take that from you, officers or not. She's a free woman. Go on, Mog. Give us another one, please. No, I tell you, no. Oh, not again, Mog. Come on now, you two, off with you. You didn't get in to see Pato, did you? No, I didn't. But I don't need the Colonel's help to deal with the likes of you. You're a disgrace to your uniforms. Look who's talking. Ah, oh, come on, Bill. I'd rather drink than argue. Won't get any more out of them. Oh, Mug, it's getting worse. Oh, I can handle the ticket of leave, men. And the common soldiers are no trouble, really. These young pups are deliberately baiting me. It gets worse as the months go by. Not fair, Mum. Of course it's not fair. If there was any trace of justice in New South Wales, the army runs everything. Oh, dear. They do exactly what they like. I'm sure the Colonel doesn't realise what's going on. A good man, Mog. I've just got to get in to see him. Wait a minute. Yes, I thought so. His Excellency, the acting governor and Mrs. Patterson are giving a levy to celebrate the Yuletide season. There will be dancing in the open air and so on. Then it says in brackets, any citizen may attend a levy on presenting a card and signing the visitor's book. Most of the officers and many of the free citizens are expected to be present. Many of the free citizens? Well, he said so himself, Mog. All the rights and privileges of a free citizen except... Mog? Fetch me a fresh quill and ink. I'm going to write myself a visiting card. Major and Mrs. David MacDonald. Major, my dear Mr. McDonald. Good afternoon, sir. A beautiful day. I must apologize for Lydia's not being here with me to receive you. The heat. She's there in the corner. I wonder... Oh, Colonel. Come, David. This is an elegant affair. I'm having such a lot of fun. One would imagine one was there. Upper crust are here. What people doing what is done? Nobody doing things that should be left undone. Fourteen thousand miles from the heart of the fire sea. We have made our life blessed with grief and propriety. Tearing something fine from this work of dance with our own bare hands. Twenty years ago, no one thought we could speak it, which wasn't true because we had soon built a cricket pitch. Theatres and rotundas are big rock bands with our own bells. Of course, we had a little bit of help along the way, but only for time for months. You have to show these convicts that their crimes can never pay. The work done by them just doesn't count. After seven months in a 
dance very sailing ship. We can offer more than the wreck or the sailing ship. We have made our world as good taste in man. With a few cut commands, every dance understands and our Mr. and Mrs. Henry Askew. I do. Delightful. Miss Elizabeth Westcott. What? Miss Westcott, I am surprised to see you. Colonel, forgive this intrusion, but I must speak with you. It was the only way. This is unforgivable. He had to get rid of her, you know. And this so-called inn of hers, the silver bottle, a low place of the very worst type. No respectable person would be seen there. I thought everybody knew. Really, this is too much. So I had no choice but to come. Oh, can you help me at all, sir? Oh. If what you tell me is true, is most unjust. Obviously, I must look into this myself. And I'll do that. I'll give you my promise. Lieutenant William Collins. Ah, Collins. Come, my dear. The music has commenced, and we are supposed to leave the dancing. Oh, yes, of course. Come, my dear. Uh, Collins, you must excuse me. Duty calls. Uh, would you? Miss Westcott, Elizabeth, may I have the honor of this dance? Oh, Mr. Soon. Richard. Richard, thank heaven. Another minute.
Nearly died. Oh, Lydia, the perennial debutant. <laughs> Her filth stood on end, I swear they did. <laughs> oh, no, it's the heat, my dear. Quite gives me the vapors. <laughs> Having the strength to lift one tiny thing up. <laughs> Come on now, boys. You shouldn't even be here. Oh, but my dear, haven't you heard? Bombazine is out. It's all swan. Mousseline to swan. <laughs> and the bosoms are worn here, just under the chin. <laughs> oh, it's so classical. One feels like a Greek temple maiden, like a veritable festal vargin. <laughs> Major, who's that just coming in? Haven't the strength to rise myself. Ah! It's that terrible girl! Don't, don't being unkind, you mustn't go on like that this. That terrible, thieving girl, Major. I thought we'd seen the last of her, my dear. <laughs> and Mr. Patterson has a soft spot for her. <laughs> but then we all know that the Colonel is a mad fail. Complete idiotic fool. Miss Westcott, you said you had a problem. I came here to see for myself, and you do have a problem. Colonel, I... Assigned convicts out without permission. You could all be hanged for this. You will return to your quarters immediately, and I'll deal with you in the morning. Well, move! <laughs> Colonel, what can I say? I think it would be better if you said nothing, Elizabeth, and listened to me instead. I promised to look into your complaint, but that's not why I came here. It's the incident at my house this afternoon. Oh, Colonel, please. No, Elizabeth, you must listen to me. You and Richard must not see each other again. Richard is a grown man. He knows his own mind. Does he? 
He has to live in this colony for some years. How do you think... But I love him, sir. I need him. Love is not enough. The two of you can't set out together to remake the world by yourself. I don't care about the world. Oh, not for yourself, perhaps, but for Richard you do. And that's why you must promise not to see him again. I have no choice, have I? Oh, yes, Elizabeth, you have. That's why I'm asking you, begging you to do this. For Richard's sake. Then the choice is made for me. I'll see Richard. I'll tell him all this. It's not going to be easy for him or for me either. But he will understand. Don't make him hate me. Please. I won't. I promise. Now, I must go. Oh, Colonel, about those three men, will it go hard with them? Wasn't their behavior what you came to see me about? No, in spite of what they did, they're not the real trouble. It's the young officers, more than ever now after today. Well, if you keep your promise to me, Elizabeth, I'll see you have no more trouble. And the men? I'll deal lightly with them. But you won't see them around here for a while. Good night. You're a wonderful girl, Elizabeth. Wonderful girl. I touch something, anything, that shatters away to pieces. Trouble and then, trouble again. Stupid as any girl can hope to be. Richard, don't let's fall out over this. I think too much of you and too much of Elizabeth to let you sacrifice yourselves. Perhaps if circumstances have been different, there'd been another time, another place. These are academic considerations, sir. I accept your ruling, unwillingly, but I accept it. Is that all, sir? I beg your pardon, sir. What is it, Randall? Colonel, Mansfield and the others. Oh, no, not now, man, in the morning. They bolted, sir, all three of them. They wouldn't dare. Uh, Soames, just a moment. Have you searched all the buildings? Yes, sir. They're nowhere. And, sir... Well, speak up, man. The hutch, sir. It's empty. The rabbits? They've taken my rabbits? Yes, sir. This is outrageous! Well, I'm surrounded by dolts and idiots. Soames, take this incompetent ninny, get some others, turn the whole town upside down if you have to, but find those men and get them back here by morning ready for hanging. Well, get on with it. Yes, sir. The louts. Breaking their assignments, I might overlook. But stealing my rabbits. Who is it? What do you want at this time? It's Richard. Let me in. No, Richard. I can't see you. Go away. Please go away. I know. I've seen the Colonel. But this is something else. Now let me in for the love of heaven. I can't. It's the three boys. They've absconded. Oh, no. They've taken the rabbits. Oh, the fools. He'll kill them when he gets them. I came here as soon as I could. The boys are certain to come to you. They're not here. I haven't seen them. Oh, Richard, you mustn't stay. I know. Elizabeth, please don't involve yourself. I haven't seen them, Richard. But they'll come. Will you turn them in? Oh, Richard, I couldn't. But I will send them away. Please go, Richard. Oh, Richard, you shouldn't have done that. How can I give you up now? Not to have 
kissed you at all. Never to have known it. It wouldn't have been quite so hard. But now... Oh, Elizabeth, I love you. you to know, Mr. Soames, that while you were here in direct contravention of my orders, the three men have been caught. As you might expect, if you had your mind on your duty, rolling drunk and in full view down the street carrying my rabbits. Have you any explanations? No, sir. Sir, he came no, here Elizabeth, looking no. for... No, it's no use. Had he any reason to suppose they'd come here? No, sir. Then I have no alternative. Give me your coat. You need no longer consider yourself a member of the New South Wales Corps, Mr. Soames. Randall, take this man to the military prison. He can spend the night with the others. It will give him time to think about what he has done until I deal with them all in the morning. Good night, Miss Wiscott. Watching us hang, the yell and the bling, cascade the end of the year. 
We only pinched a lousy rabbit And because it's a most alarming habit But it leaves you wondering why When the army officers want a thing and to grab it Someone closes the night They say the orphan life's eternal But the gallows is still a damned infernal machine And we can't pretend to be keen to be quickly, quietly hung to please the colonel Even though we have been like grown up and as absurd as well as obscene And like bad children heard as often as seen It's hanged, not hung. Either ways is horrible. We can always escape. Brilliant thought. Well? These locks are no trouble. Oh, and presumably the good corporal will come and hold a lantern for you while you pick them. Oh, I don't need the corporal to hold a lantern. Where could we go if we did get out? We could go to Elizabeth. You stay away from Elizabeth. I mean, Miss Westcott. Oh, it can speak. What a surprise. You needn't worry your aristocratic head about it, Cully. We're not out. Yet, you're not going to drag her into this. The Colonel already thinks she's involved. Now look here, Mansfield. If you're hatching up some brilliant plot, I'll have the guards onto you pretty fast. I'll call them and warn them. Well, what have you got to say to that? This. <laughs> Boys, quick, listen. Shut your mouths. Get some sleep. Maybe a last chance. Very lovely place to spend Christmas. Worse for them, if they live to see it. Yeah, I suppose they won't have that. The Colonel's rabbits. Right. Uh. All right, Bob. Oh, Bob, oh, 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 Mr. Oh, 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 sir. He's kicking and popping at the mouth. Oh, he stopped. Oh, I think he's dead. Oh, Paul, quick. Don't pull that, Mansfield. Mr. Soames. It's no trick. I can't feel any heartbeat. All right, you. I'm coming. Jack. Oh, it's terrible. I think he's dead. Come on, shake it. Here, Jack. Come on, Bill. You see, Corporal, it's no trick. I know you too well, Mansfield. Get over in face wall. Oh, Corporal, how could you think any such thing? Come on, over in corner and put your hands on wall. Watch him close, Bill. If he moves, shoot him. Right. Taking no chances. Now then, watch up. Say, oh, Mr. Harbert will shoot you. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Good, then shut up and listen. Have you got the keys to the main gate? No. Mm -hmm. Has the sentry then? Uh, 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 I. Good. Uh, You're going to call out to him. Tell him this. Jack! What's up, Cop? Uh, this man's near killed Mr. Soames. Bill's going to march and set the government out and wake up Colonel. Uh, let the two of them through, but make sure you're not to grill after them. Uh, Jack, uh, watch out for tricks, though. Oh, the injustice. Unfair, unfair. A mere slip of the hand of the unfortunate man in the rain. How could you think I'd attack him? Oh, mercy, have mercy. Think of me, poor aged mother. If you hang me, the shock of me. Oh, what a cruel, merciless system. Is there no justice? Well, I'm for this. 
I shouldn't be at all surprised. Come along now. You're a beauty, Freddy. The credit's all yours, Bob. A masterstroke. Who? Me. Rope is made of rope and water. Ooh. Rope is all a player's daughter. Ooh. Rope likes to Girl, you'll wake your dead. Oh, Mercy! Oh, it's a matter. I still forget crazy. Oh, favorite love is all right. He's just had an heavy night, that's all. You've no cause to come sneaking in here and start the wits out of the poor girl. What's she turning out to jail? Indeed. What are you doing out of jail? Oh, no. Richard. He had a bit of an accident in jail, Mum, so we brought him here, like. What's him up in the club? You know what you've done, don't you? You've made a criminal out of him. It'll be the end of him. Oh, no. No, you didn't. You couldn't. Well, sir, it's surprising to find a person like you in a situation like this. You seem a well-spoken lad. Oh, don't joke about it. We're both in trouble now. I know. We'll have to hide you. Oh, it's no use. It's the first place they'll look. And I won't have you involved, Elizabeth, and that's flat. Now, boys, we'll just have to get back into prison before morning inspection. Don't be so flippin' silly. Yes, boys. Mr. Soames is right. Not because of me. Because it's the decent thing to do. Go back to prison? Not on your sweet life, never. But don't you see? You can't just run away from everything. <laughs> To live with life. Life is like a wife. Joy as well as pride. Don't give up the fight. Fight with all your might. If you know you're right. But when you've done wrong, and the law has seen it, take what comes along. Helps the meek. Weakness isn't weak. So before you speak, turn the other cheek. Learn to live with life. If we could only live our life, it's like a wife. A nagging wife would be a joy as well as strife. A thing of misery and strife. Don't give up the fight. And now you're telling us to fight with all your mind. A man can only wonder if you know you're right. And always short of being right. But when you've done wrong, you're gonna know it. And the law has seen it. We're not the sort to show it. Take what comes along, and you are strong. No, we don't mean it. Never. Heaven helps the meek. You should say heaven help the meek. This isn't weak. You needn't think we'll do it. So before you speak, out of the breath we're gonna speak. Turn the other cheek. It's like your ruddy cheek. Now that we are loose, they'll never leave you running looser than the noose. We're sure that standing here and arguing's no use. Way out of this, so what's the use? Why should we go back? We told you why you should come back and face the rack. Now stop exaggerating, things are looking black. A long way short of looking black. But when you've done wrong, I have to know it. and the law has seen it, because you're sure to show it. Take what comes along, and you are strong. Yes, we must see it. There's no time to wait. It's nearly morning, please don't wait. And we'll be late. But then prevail the last, and now we can be great. A part of something grand and great. Probably facing
You know he's going to find us here, don't you? Oh. Colonel, that's who. Said he'd be round first thing to see young prisoners. Oh, can I hear someone coming now? That'll be him. Lads, where for it? You what? You'll find us soon enough. Oh, good morning, sir. Hey, by gum. Say your amen, little man. Your prayers have been answered. What the... Now, don't look a gift horse in the mouth, Corporal. Just lock us up quietly, and if you don't say anything about our being outside during the night, neither will we. We're all here. But I don't get it. This is crazy. Oh, just do it, Corp. Don't flame in argue. If it's your own way, but I still think you're crazy. I know we are. Being to wait, I can hear someone coming. Jack, is that our foot? He blown it's the colonel. Oh. Blast you, Soames. I shut up, man. Corporal, put that man in Harbert's place. Who, oh, me? Yes, you. Oh. Get under his blanket. Hurry, man. In his collar. Morning, sir. Good morning. Everything in order? Yes, sir. Fine. Ah, good morning, Corporal. Good morning, sir. <laughs> Beautiful day, sir. Terrible day. Uh, uh, this way, sir. Uh, no, sir, not there, sir. In here, sir. What do you mean, in here, sir? Oh, uh, Mr. Soames, sir. Didn't you want to see him, sir? I want to see the whole damn lot of them. Ah, there you are, Mansfield. Where else? Silence, you insolent dog. Uh, do you want to get in, sir? No, of course I don't want to get in. I'll speak to them from here. Line them up. Ah, come on, lads, line up. Ah. Well, you've had all night to think about it. What have you got to say for yourselves? Sir! The rabbits, they're missing again. Missing? Nonsense. I saw them myself 20 minutes ago. No, sir. They're gone. Well, don't stand there, man. Start searching. You know the sort of places to look. Places like the silver bottle. Yes, just like the silver bottle. Sir? I'll bet that Westcott woman has them. Thinks she can get back at me this way, does she? Come on! No, wait! It was me, sir, what pinched the rabbit. Just a short while back, sir. Rubbish! You're in jail, aren't you? Well, we are now, sir. But we were out last night. What? We only just got back, sir. You see, the rabbits are at the end, sir. But it wasn't Miss Elizabeth. It was me, sir. Oh, ridiculous. If you did get out, why would you come back? Because it's a decent thing to do. Corporal, there's no truth in this story, is there? Indeed, no, sir. No, I should think not. Ah. Come on. When I find those rabbits and this west on her clap her in line. Now, look, fellas, I only can't... Shut up! Uh. Yeah. But the Colonel's not here, ma'am. I've told you there's nobody here but us. You can't deceive me. I have definite information that he came here shortly after midnight. And his bed hasn't been slept in. I know what he's been up to. He can't deceive me. Well? No, no, if you say so. Mog! I'm right. You! I thought so. Where is he? In there? All right. <gasps> Where have you hidden them? But they're in jail, sir. The rabbits, woman. My rabbits. Come on, you. You can't hide from me. I know what you've been up to. Lydia. Out all night. Come on, you beast. Where are you? She'll find me and she thinks. Should I let her think she's right, sir? You wouldn't dare. Wouldn't I? I suppose you think you'll make me let them off. I'll simply tell the truth, sir. As always. Huh. Oh, there you are. I knew it, you beast. Ma'am. Lydia, don't listen to her. She's a lying. She she's... can't fool me. I know you out all night. I don't know where Mr. Patterson was, but he certainly wasn't with me. Well, that, that, that's true, Lydia. You can make up your mind. I'll never believe you. Ma'am, Mr. Patterson wasn't with me for one very good reason. Mr. Soames was. 
And with Richard here, I'd hardly be interested in the Colonel. Mr. Soames is in jail. He is now. But during the night, all four of them escaped. They were out. So they're back there now. A likely story. Yes, now she's started on the same nonsense as Harvard. They could never have got out. On my soul! They have got out. Again, sir? Again. Oh, Mr. Patterson, can you ever forgive me? Richard? Strange thing, Mum, the yard's full of rabbits. They're eating everything. Oh, don't exaggerate, girl. There are only two. Two? Twelve, more like. She's littered. She's littered! Come on, oh. help me catch them. It's all right now. It's all right. These tricks you play. But see the way you came and stole my heart. Wind suddenly sighed, clouds suddenly fly. I asked myself why, when suddenly you. in one night. You're not going to let them off, are you? Certainly not. I have some very special punishments in mind. Mr. Soames, now you are awake. You're to stay out of the army. The New South Wales Corps is disbanded and we are all going home, but you will stay here. As for you, young woman, you still have four years of your sentence to serve. That is punishment enough. Thank you, sir. And now, you three. I can't unload you on Macquarie when he arrives, poor chap. No, you will each serve an extra five years and no tickets of leave. But, sir! Silence, there's more. I'm going to assign you to the most notorious misfit in the colony. To Mr. Soames. And that is the worst fate I can imagine, not a word. Serve them right. Come, Mr. Patterson, we are really going. We are. Marvellous. Colonel, just one thing. Where were you last night? I was sitting up all night with these rabbits. But don't tell her, Elizabeth. I think she'd almost rather I was with you. In fact... Grog is made of rum and water. Hi, hi, Mog Maguire. Mog is old Maguire's daughter. Hi, hi, Mog Maguire. Mog, 